Hey everyone, Jeremy L. Jones here, author of Ruins of Empire. So we have run into one of those weird little situations here at Ruins of Empire HQ. It seems that producer Sean has come down with a case of late summer ennui. Maybe it's because I've kept him locked inside putting together this podcast while everyone else enjoys the warm sunny days, but I find him drifting away during recording sessions and looking longingly out the window when he should be editing. But it got me thinking. There is still time to pack one more title into your summer reading list, and of course, what would be better than the complete science fiction thriller that is Saturnius Mons, available as an ebook and paperback at Amazon.com. So go grab your copy today, and Sean, well, if we sell enough books, maybe I'll let them out for Christmas this year. Maybe. You are listening to Ruins of Empire, Saturnius Mons, book one of the Ruins of Empire Project, a serial podcast novel by Jeremy L. Jones, read by the author and Tyler Murphy. The story so far. After uniting the Perfunduloi and Urbanoi people under a tenuous alliance and driving the Corporation soldiers from the refineries, the members of the Human Reconnection Project returned to the Corporation's landing zone, expecting them to end their attempt to take over the moon. What they found was an entire base gearing up for a full assault. They were captured and taken to Vince Laban, where he explained that, since Kronos had passed him information about the refineries, they had been disavowed by the Ministry. Furthermore, Laban offered them a choice, be prosecuted for their crimes against the corporation, or agree to help him. Isra Jacario and the rest of the group remain steadfast in their resolve against Laban and his corporation troops. Chapter 23 Then came the Exodus. The exact nature of its beginning is unknown. All that is completely understood is that there was a period toward the end of the fall when humans around the globe contributed unprecedented amounts of resources toward ships escaping Earth. I have my own simple and private theory. If the corporation did indeed turn the Earth into a complex prison of torture and pain, who among the survivors wouldn't try to escape? From the Fall, The Decline and Failure of 21st Century Civilization by Martin Raff Well, this had to be a new record somewhere, thought Vega as four marines led him, Althea, Kronos, and Isra through the tight corridors of the shuttle. There were three opposing forces on Titan, and Vega had been imprisoned by all of them. He'd managed to annoy everyone on the planet so much that, at one time or another, they all threw him in a jail, rather than deal with him. A perverted part of him was a little proud of that. The brig aboard the shuttle was just a steel cage, set among the piles of crates and equipment. Just another bit of cargo. On a hostile planet working around the clock, there was usually no need for a sophisticated jail. But human behavior being what it is, it never hurts to have a secure place where people can sober up and think about what they did. Three Marines, armed with non-lethal electronic rifles, led them to the brig. That was for the best, since Cronus struggled, screamed, and fought against the soldiers so much that it wouldn't be long before they were forced to use them. Vago, Althea, and Isra walked silently with their hands bound. Even with the brig in sight, Cronus tried to bolt again. It was about the fifth or sixth time, and the Marines were ready for it. One grabbed Cronus by the hand restraints, while the other aimed the electronic rifle, clearly dying to use it. You don't understand, said Kronos, struggling. We must contact the city, or we will lose it. We will lose it all. There will be nothing left. Nothing to under... The Marine holding the rifle told Kronos to shut up and slammed the butt of the gun against the back of his head. He fell like a wheat sack, mumbling the same warnings. The two Marines picked him up, carried him to the brig, and threw him inside. Without a word, they motioned to Vago and the rest to join the little man curled up on the ground, which they all did without a sound. There was a set of metal benches bolted to the floor along the perimeter, 
so Vago took a seat to wait for whatever came next. As far as he was concerned, he was quite happy waiting until Laban's nasty business was done. But that wasn't going to be the way of things. As soon as the door to the little cage slammed shut and the marines walked away, the energy in the confined area reached a rolling boil. Kronos writhed on the floor, clutching his head. It's over. The untouched history of the planet. Unedited. The complete and total history of the fall. Wiped out. Easter sat down at one of the benches, pulled up her sleeve, and activated her Eros computer. There will be much to talk about soon, Kronos, she said with an air of impatience. But first, I need you to help me fix this problem. Kronos rolled over, still clutching his head. These people will not fix it. They barrel towards disaster and death. It is the only thing they know. Vago thought back to the mammoths being butchered near the city gates. All human endeavors were always at a constant sprint towards disaster, with no way of stopping it. Figure out a way, Isra snapped. She activated the comm on her computer and sent a call to the Houston's communicator. She paused for a moment while it made the connection and said, Houston, it is Isra. This is an emergency. You need to send people to the refinery. Something terrible. Isra paused as the Houston responded. Her face, normally a mask of neutrality and passivity, cracked. Her eyes widened, and she let out a gasp. In Isra's reserved emotional lexicon, that was the equivalent of a 30-minute cursing tirade. Vago leaned back, content to ride this out until the end. Althea, on the other hand, paced the room, examining the bars that surrounded them and the electronics that kept them locked in, looking for some kind of weakness that didn't exist. Vago removed his hat and pulled his cue in front of him. Might as well relax, Althea. If the Venganto are fixing to cleanse this planet when the sun sets, it'll only be a couple of hours before Laban will be hot-tailing out of this horror show of a moon. Althea ignored him and kept examining the brig for weaknesses. Easter closed her eyes. I understand. Get your people to safety. We will try to help. With that, she shut off her computer and hung her head. The Houston says the alliance between the Urbanoi and Perfinduloi is broken down already. Halifaco and his men have already moved to occupy the refinery complex. Vago shook his head. That don't make any sense. Why now? They still got Corporation Dimwits charging forward. Why break off ties with the city so soon? Kronos rolled over onto his back and stared straight ahead at the ceiling. Because he intends to destroy the entire complex. Isra leaned forward. Foolish, but also impossible. The Perf and Duloid do not have the munitions to accomplish such a task. Perhaps some damage, yes, but not destroy the entire complex. Kronos spoke again, but this time his voice had a distinct, automated rhythm about it, as if he were imitating a recorded computer voice. Containment must be maintained. Backflow will cause catastrophic failure. What are you talking about? asked Isra. Kronos, still laying flat on the ground, closed his eyes, and breathed hard as if he were holding back tears. It's all in the program you made me give to Halifaco. I need my equipment. I could show you. Isra got up, reached down, and pulled Kronos to a sitting position by his arm. Well, you do not have it, so try. Tell us what is happening. Kronos's eyes moved as if he were trying to work something out in his head, then he dropped down to all fours. The floor of the shuttle was thinly coated with a yellowish dust, a product from when the refineries were still pumping out life to the moon. Kronos ran his finger through, drawing a crude diagram. Vago leaned forward to see, and Althea and Isra gathered close as well. When Kronos was done, there was a picture, if one squinted at the right angle and added a decent helping of imagination, of the holding tanks that were flashing bright red in Laban's diagram. Kronos again started talking in that mock computerized voice, imitating the instructions from the tutorial he built. It is most critical to monitor the levels of refined products in the mid-sequence holding tanks. Disruptions can cause unsafe levels of volatile chemicals to build. In the event refined fuels spill to critical levels, the first step is to isolate the tanks from all equipment involved in the first stages of the refining process and halt further production until the problem can be resolved. Kronos drew a line across the left side of his drawing, apparently indicating a shutoff. Containment must be maintained. Backflow will cause catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure meaning what exactly? asked Vago. Kronos wiped away the crude diagram, 
with one swipe. All of it. Gone. The backflow could cause an explosion that will consume every piece of the refineries. Althea took in a sharp breath. Was that mentioned in the information you gave Halafaku? Kronos shook his head miserably. Every word. Althea started pacing their little cage again with a renewed sense of urgency. Isra, on the other hand, displayed a kind of preternatural calm as she sat back down and eyed Kronos with a predatory edge. I understand why Halifaco and the Houston would know about this, but Laban, why did you betray that information to him? Kronos sat back. It was the only way I could protect the data inside the city, a wealth of unedited information from before the fall. You have your mission, Isra. I have mine. Vago, still watching Althea pace around the cage, put his hat back on and stood up. Not that it matters much. We're stuck here and I don't see that changing any time soon. Althea walked to the brig door and held up a key card. Lifted it from one of the marines. That's great. Only problem is the panel is way over there, said Vago, pointing to a console a good ten meters out of reach. So what exactly do you have in mind? Althea looked up, tracing a set of wires back with her eyes. These key cards are impossible to clone. They carry an encrypted code on a chip, as well as a small power cell. Now, these cheap electronic lots are often badly shielded. Her eyes followed the cabling, back down to the electronic lock on the brick door. She shoved the card into a space in between the door and the frame. If I find the right spot, the cell will cause a power surge and the door will spring open. Althea took several steps back. There it is now. What good whack, that would do it. Vago folded his arms. One good whack, huh? Then a burst of sparks and a loud slam. After that, a pack of armed marines are bound to get really curious as to why we're not in our little cage. Althea took a deep breath and looked at Vago. Her glare felt strikingly similar to the one Isra was boring into Kronos's head. And just what do you think we should do, then? Sit and wait for all of Laban's men to march into a suicide mission? Or wait for them to tear down the city and kill everyone in it? If we sit here, hundreds will die. Hundreds are going to die regardless of what we do. There ain't no sense in getting in the middle of... Vega was cut short by Isra's voice. It had a sharp, sub-zero edge to it that commanded the attention of everyone in hearing distance. Who are you, Kronos? Kronos stood up, rubbing a growing bump on the back of his head. What do you mean? Who are you? Who are you working for? Her voice, cold and dense as lead, echoed through the cargo hold. Kronos stood up, his eyes wide with fear. I, I don't... Before Kronos could even finish the thought, Isra was up and across a small enclosure. She grabbed him by his vest and slammed him against the barred walls with a crash. You are either a traitor to the ministry or working for somebody else. So start talking or I swear by my father I will end you right here. Althea made a slight movement towards Kronos and Isra as if she might do something to stop it. Vago took her by the forearm and shook his head. This is one of those things that had to be worked out. No amount of understanding or seeing things from the other's point of view would help. It had to be out. Isra slammed Kronos against the bars again. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you are doing here. I am Kronos. I slice into the ministry via the old internets and recall the original commands. I faked a request for a multi-spectrum communications and field operations technician and I copied it to all the appropriate data networks. I linked that to the shuttle registry. Too much paper to untangle. Too many orders. No one would ask questions when I turned up. Isra pressed Kronos harder against the bars. Who are you working for? What is your relationship with Vince Laban? Kronos struggled against Isra's grip and croaked. We are an organization of slicers. The truth of the fall has been denied to the people. They must know. We can't let it be destroyed. Somebody help! The commotion caught the attention of some marines nearby. Vigo heard shouts and footsteps heading their direction. Isra pressed harder. Liar! Why did you betray me to Laban? Kronos croaked. Not intentional! Your wars are going to destroy the mainframe! Laban gave me a safe place to upload it! I didn't! He turned on me! The same four marines from earlier ran up to the door of the brig. They each cradled an electronic rifle on their arms and watched Isra and Kronos with a certain amount of amusement. Althea whipped around and hissed at the soldiers. Don't just stand there, help, before she kills him. One of the soldiers laughed. That was as much help as he was prepared to offer. Meanwhile, Kronos started to turn blue. 
Isra added more weight. What can Laban do with the data you gave to him? What are you so afraid of? Kronos was past the point of answering. All he could do was gasp in pain. In that moment, Althea tapped Vega on the shoulder and tilted her head at the door of the brig. The key card was still in the space. All it needed was a good whack, and the door should fly open, right to the marine standing on the other side. He'd have to move fast. He pushed back and hit the card with a side kick. There was a flash of bright white sparks. The door flew open and, with Vago's kick, did so with enough force to smash into two of the marines. Before the other two could get any sense of what was happening, Vago bolted out of the cage. One of the marines had his electric rifle charged, but before he could fire, Vago grabbed the barrel and pulled it towards him. The marine stumbled forward, and Vago threw a crushing punch to the man's face. He staggered backward and released the rifle. Vago spun around and fired a bolt of electricity at the other marine, still standing. The man screamed as he crumbled backward, his muscles painfully contracting. The marine he just punched in the face was up and getting ready to rush his position. The rifle needed several minutes to charge and was useless until then. Well, more or less. Vigo took it by the barrel and swung at the man's head. The butt of it connected and the whole thing exploded in a shower of sparks and plastic shards. The marine crumpled to the ground. Cheap corporate, you suck, muttered Vago, turning his attention to the two marines he smashed with the door. They both were coming to their senses now. One had a broken nose, the other a nasty gash in his head. The one with the broken nose went for his weapon. Vago ran forward and kicked the man in the stomach before he could reach it and dropped him to the ground with a jab across the jaw. Vago picked up the rifle himself. It was charged and ready. Vigo aimed it at the marine with the gash in his head and pulled the trigger. A flash of electricity and a scream, and the last marine fell to the ground, twitching. Isra shook her head and let Kronos fall. About time. What do I need to do? Broadcast it for you? Vago glanced at the aftermath. You could have told me you were running a distraction. If I had, the marines would have known it was a distraction and it would not have worked, would it? She turned her attention to Kronos, gasping on the bench. How can we stop Halifaco from destroying the refineries? Kronos gasped. Near the center. Main junction system. He would need to open the right valves. Send the volatiles back to the boilers. Isra knelt beside him. How do we find that? Kronos got up. The communicator. If he has it with him, it's linked to the satellite network. If he intends to destroy the refineries, he will be there. Find him. Find the junction station. If he is not there... There is nothing to fear. Then we will need to work fast, said Isra. Vago prodded one of the fallen soldiers with his foot to see if he was still stunned. That would be good. We need to be getting ourselves out of here before these boys go and wake up. I will need my equipment, said Kronos, starting from the open door. I can run scans of the refineries and... Kronos stopped short when Isra stepped into his path. Not you, Kronos. You have done enough damage. When we get back to Earth... There is going to be a lot of talk about what you did. Falsifying official documents, illegal use of NuvoNet, interfering with official business, destruction of protected ministry territory, and anything else I can think of between now and then. When we get to Earth, I will make sure they put you in a dungeon so deep they will be shipping light to you in jars. Now get out of my way. One of the Marines on the ground started stirring. Vago fired a blast from the electronic rifle, causing the man to convulse and stop moving. Not to belabor the point, but time is a factor. East returned and led the way out of the cargo bay, followed by Vago and Althea. Vago glanced back over his shoulder to see Kronos, standing alone among the fallen bodies. You have been listening to The Ruins of Empire, Saturnius Mons, the first book of The Ruins of Empire Project. The Ruins of Empire podcast was written by Jeremy L. Jones and produced by Sean Vincent. Cover art was by Nick Martin. Music was Broken Reality by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons 3.0 license.